You know, most of us, most of us work pretty bloody hard. Some of us work at work. Yeah, love you, honey. Have a love good day. You. And some of us work from home. Some of us work at home. <laughs> and some of us even work on that side gig that'll get us out of working at work so we can work from home whilst also working at home while working at home from home. Home, work, home, work, sleepy, home, work. <laughs> so we hustle through our daily routines, preparing for this, preparing for that, working hard, and investing into the piggy bank of the future. All the while, most of us are dreaming about greener pastures, whether it's a different job or a place you'd rather be, or maybe even it's a whole different life from what you have now. So why do we do this? Why do we convince ourselves that work is the only thing that actually matters? So to our usual castaway crew, we're aware that this topic is nothing new and maybe it's getting a little bit old at this point. But to those of you joining us for the very first time, it is important and to the OGs, it's still very, very relevant. Um, so as many of you know, we've been building our home in Ormoc Leyte, which is my wife's hometown. And actually on that note, we actually have some quick updates for you today. So make sure you stick around until the end of this video. But this is the catalyst for what we're talking about today. So our house in the Philippines is almost finished. And as exciting as I'd like to say that this is, and it is, don't get me wrong, but the reality of it all is really beginning to hit home it's getting uncomfortably close, and I never thought I'd say this, but it's uncomfortably close to, for lack of a better term, let's call it D-Day. Which means it's time for us to start making some serious decisions. And you know what? We're feeling exactly what we often talk about on this channel, which is that fear and doubt that's starting to set in. Look, fear is a powerful force. as I'm sure most of us know. And sometimes it can really feel like almost this invisible hand that holds us back. Here, yeah. oh, take my hand, ah, come on. <laughs> Especially when we're about to reach that dream or that goal that we've been envisioning for such a long time. You know, like I'm sure most of you can imagine this and some of you may not even have to. Maybe some of you are already at this point where you've spent years, years and years dreaming and planning and you're literally right at the cusp of achieving that, of success. And all of a sudden, fear, the great oppressor, creeps on in and starts whispering thoughts of doubt into your mind. And it makes you question everything. And sometimes it can even cause us to walk away from what we've worked so hard to achieve, to achieve right at the last minute. So let's talk a little bit about how we can push past this fear and doubt. Uh, this channel is designed as an open forum for people to engage, learn and express their stories and experiences. So guys, make sure you sound off in the comments section below uh, if you've been through this process or if you're about to make this drastic change in your life, just as we are. So make sure to drop your comments in the comments section below. Um, you never know who's watching uh, and who might have that one piece of advice that could really help you out uh, on your journey to this so-called path less traveled. Um, and guys, I honestly think that your stories and experiences and advice could be a beacon of hope for someone else who's also trying to travel down the same road. So don't hesitate and let's take this journey together. And guys, if you could hit that like button and subscribe to our channel, we would really, really appreciate it. Um, it really helps us out, especially as a small growing channel, so we can continue to grow our fantastic community and continue making videos just like this one. So that's enough from me and let's dive right on in. So we've been cleaning up the house and I think as Jan mentioned that we're more on the side of selling, mm -hmm. especially when we get ready, but 
Yeah, it's it's scary. It's difficult. Huh? It's, it's scary, scary to put it in a uh, rental because we mm -hmm. also do not know if the renters are gonna look after it as much as we look after it. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's difficult if the rent if the renter would also um, cover the entire cost per week for the mortgage. That's another factor that we are also thinking about. Which is all fears that sort of stem from COVID, right? So this whole this video is sort of about you know work and you know working until you drop versus living the life that you dream of living sort of more untethered to what society expects us to do you know that's what the whole theme of this channel is about um, and it's it's funny how the things that make us the most miserable are the things that are accepted by society as the things that we should be doing whereas the things that we know that make us happy like the pursuits of our heart and the pursuits of our spirit seem to be squashed yeah it's quite hard to um now that we are um at the final stage where the house is like 90 percent accomplished now we are feeling a little bit anxious and worried what will be the uh, life there in philippines because as we all know like everybody knows that yes here in the west we can always earn we can always find a job but we also have to pay a lot of bills yes um we are anxious we we fear what will be our life there what will be our situation there but at the same same point here like what will be our life here working in the same routine daily so that's the question we are just like balancing with, yeah just as with anything new there's always going to be teething issues there's always going to be a learning curve and I suppose that's what anybody that's starting a new life or pursuing something different is. It's something that we're going to have to navigate. Look, we've gone through quite a lot um, in the five years that we've been married and it hasn't been easy. So I didn't start off rich, I didn't start out with privilege. I started out really poor in an old weatherboard house in the middle of the Yarra Valley in Victoria. Um, I didn't have anything. I didn't have any money to my name. I've been a solar installer since pretty much since we moved into Warburton, and I was doing that ever since. Now, throughout COVID, I started up my business just before COVID really became a thing, 2019. So, we had this house that we bought out in the sticks. It was about an hour and a half away from Jan's office from Melbourne CBD. It's not an hour and a half, it's two hours. Well, yeah, in Melbourne traffic, you could call it uh, two hours if you're traveling at peak, which is what we were doing. Um, so for those of you again who have been with us throughout this channel, you'll know most of our backstory. But for those of you who are new, just a quick recap. Let's just call it a recap. Um, <clears throat> so we bought this house. It was a it was a heap, absolute heap. So <clears throat> that took us about five years to renovate. It took a lot of hard work. The work that we actually did physically ourselves. Literally, the only things we didn't do on that property was the exterior rendering and connecting the septic tank plumbing from the new toilet to the septic tank. But physically, everything else we did. So you can imagine we were getting up every single morning, probably about 3.30 a.m., 4 o'clock in the morning, depending on where I was working. You know, we'd travel, I'd drop down off at the station. Long story, look, to cut a long story short, we're probably out of the house at 4 a.m. and back at about 8 p.m. at night. I'd still be getting the tools out after work because you remember how I was, every minute counts, mm. every second counts, like I was that full, like Westerner, fire, work, pursue, invest, future, money, build, wealth, like, you know, even now I'm struggling to break that habit, but I'm getting better. Yes, you are, because of better. my la la la. <laughs> yeah, that's right, la la la. So, Trying to cut a long story short, which, sorry guys, it's not at the moment, but that was it. And then, like I said, getting the tools out, and I was working till midnight, having about three and a half, four hours sleep a night. This lasted for a good three years straight. And then I was still working weekends, so I'm installing solar panels in the Melbourne winter or in the Melbourne heat. You can never get a win, you know? It's either freezing cold and you're drenched with rain, mm. or, you know, you're, you're burning out in the sun and just getting sizzled like a steak. Um, <clears throat> so, plus the driving, plus the travel time, sometimes my jobs were still another one and a half hours away in the office, like maybe in Geelong, whoever's familiar with Melbourne and Victoria, you know, I'd be going from, you know, the eastern suburbs of Melbourne, still driving to Geelong, or driving to the northern side, like uh, Epping, or even further than that, I forgot what the suburbs are there, but, you know, as a tradesman, you work pretty much all over the world, so, most of my job involved you know, Traveling. sometimes three or four hours of driving per day before you even got to start work and then picking Jan up and 
then the business happened, so I tried to start my own company. I was a pretty good installer, but I chose to start it up during COVID. Obviously, unknowingly that it would get so bad. Um, we got a good run on the first year, but then the second year, we were basically separated from essential electricians versus non-essential electricians, because they considered solar to be non-essential, even though we had less contact with the clients um, than what the actual electrician going, or plumber, or carpenter, whoever was going inside the house to make repairs. Um, we had less contact with them, which was really frustrating. So clients were backing out because they couldn't afford to pay because they were being locked down. So we weren't selling as many systems. We had money backed up in stock. I had a lot of debt that I owed to the wholesale as well, as well which I had to pay out of my own pocket. Um, so look, we ended up selling the house. We nearly lost it all, right? And I think that's where the fundamental concept arised where the key idea was to live a life untethered and live a life off grid because we realized how fragile what we actually rely on is you know and if you've got a mortgage for the next 25 years of your life this this shit could happen another 10 times throughout that period so it's just not a way that we wanted to live mm. and you know, even as, as scary as all that sounds, everything that I've just said can literally happen to anybody. And it happened to a lot of friends that I actually knew. But honestly, I, we have to count our blessings because we stayed together. Some people that we knew, some of them committed suicide and not, not directly, but acquaintances of, acquaintances of acquaintances. Their marriages collapsed. They lost their homes. They lost everything, you know? And it's like, when the slave begins to love their enslaver or their owner or their master. That's kind of like all of Western society and what we live in today is. We're, we're almost sick and we don't even realize it. Mm -hmm. we're, we're all a little bit cuckoo kachoo, you know, for lack of a better term. So what I'm trying to say is pursuing a new life in the Philippines, mm -hmm. um, trying to achieve what we're trying to achieve is a scary thought. but. At least for us, from our experiences, I think that it is better. And anybody who's also feeling and thinking the same, there's something that we'd like to share with you. So, honey, do you want to tell me a little bit about that Bible verse that you found the other oh, day? Oh, I just, um, I just randomly saw the verse under Ecclesiastes, and um, it hit me, and that's why I showed it to you. Yeah. And you were also you like, it? it was really true like if you ponder in life like you spend the rest of your life building your um, investment for your old age or um, yeah like securing your future but then we our life is never a guarantee there there might be accidents or whatsoever and then all your efforts and hard work will just be all gone meaningless it's all meaningless Yes, it is also nice to secure or have plans in place for the future. But then we also have to remember to enjoy life. The most important thing is the journey itself, like how happy you live your life, not how secure you would live your life. Because there's no security. It's all meaningless. Yeah, it is. It is. And, you know, as they say, the first generation builds it, the second generation enjoys it, and the third generation sells, sells it. it and usually end up with nothing. Um, I guess the best thing to do would be just to read. Let's start with verse 17. It says, So I hated life because the work that is done under the sun was grievous to me. All of it is, is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. I hated all these things I had toiled for under the sun because I must leave them to the one who comes after me. Mm -hmm. And who knows whether that person will be wise or foolish. Yet they will have control over all the fruit of my toil into which I have poured my effort and skill under the sun. This too is meaningless. So my, be my heart began to despair over all my toilsome labor under the sun. For, my person, for a person may labor with wisdom, knowledge and skill, and then they must leave all they own to another who has not toiled for it. This too is meaningless and a great misfortune. What do people get for all the toil and anxious striving with which they labor under the sun? And this is the, this is the key part here. All their days, their work is grief and pain. Even at night, their minds do not rest. This too is meaningless. Everything is meaningless. That's, well, I wouldn't say that everything in life is meaningless. I think the context of this is basically saying that 
You know, for example, you could work your whole life to build assets and build wealth. Empire. And then one of you gets sick, one partner dies, the other one's going to eventually remarry. Your kids, they might inherit everything you have, but they might not have the skill and the wisdom or the appreciation. No affection attached no affection to it. Have, and then they'll just blow it all on gut. You know what I mean? So it's trying to show us the things that we're toiling for and working for and it's all considered good. And just, I honestly think it's almost to the point, I wouldn't call it evil, but at the same time it is used as this oppression and as this tactic against us just to keep us enslaved to our own bubbles that we don't even realize don't really mean anything. Mm. You know, so uh, I guess for us pursuing this dream of living in the Philippines is scary because we are going to have to make that decision to sell. Like, mm. I know, I don't want to speak for you, honey, but I know that we're the kind of people where we can't have our minds separated in two, two places at a time. Like, already knowing that the Philippines is being built and the house is there waiting for us, you know, sleepless nights, restless mind. We can't sleep probably because we know, oh, what if something happens? We're not there to look after it. And it's the same with having the investment property in Glendale. Like, are they looking after it? Oh, they've called up, the plumbing's broken, we've got to pay money for that. You know, then we have this house. So if we were to leave this here and rent it out, we'd go move over there and it would be no change to what we're experiencing here. And then we'd be stressed about what we've got in Australia. So to really untether, you have to... You have to... Disconnect. You have to disconnect. So... Mm -hmm. Coming from me, at least, I can't have my mind in many places at once. And I don't think we've even realized that we're so burnt out. Like, I've lost my creativity. I've lost my passion, my drive for a lot of things in life, which I used to have when I was younger. And now all these thoughts of, you know, future, 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 which is so ingrained and drilled into you, um, you know, as a young adult and, you know, as, a, as an adult, what you should be doing. I honestly think it's more destructive than it is constructive i don't know do you have any mm. thoughts on that honey like you have to pour your uh -huh. your um efforts into one place something that you can fully enjoy at present not in the future mm. or not from a distance that's what i thought like for me it was me who actually voiced out or expressed my my thoughts that we can't live like this having multiple investments at such a young age, but we're, start, we're just like at the beginning of our lives. We can't handle all of this. Like, we, what if one of us lose our job? Who's gonna be um, paying all of the the rates for the uh, properties and for maintaining everything? Well, the thing is, we can, and a lot of people do it, and they just, you know, manage to blitz through life when nothing goes wrong, and that's all touch wood, well and good. And we could be in the same position, but it's the point of the stress it's what it actually does to your mind and does to you spiritually it sucks your soul like you don't realize is actually happening and that's the thing a lot of people will logically uh, oh, what's the word they will like approve of it themselves or they will make excuses as to why it's but this is good this is good this is good this is good and it's almost like this you know, convincing yourself that it is good when deep down inside you're just dying every day, mm. you're withering and withering, but it's good, it's good, it's good, you know what I mean? And just drinking the poison, mm -hmm. you know, and saying that it's good. Um, that's probably the best way that I can think to describe it now off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You used to be so engrossed with all this um, securing the future, but then um, you seem to wake up after like constantly like let you know that um, we have to leave the present we can't just leave the future all the time scared that we are going to be homeless that we are going to be um, no no future no, uh, no no nothing at all in the future but the future is not a promised and then we'll miss out on living today and miss out on living and yes that'll be a bigger regret than you know, potentially securing millions in the future. Okay, it might happen, mm. but the reality is most people will work hard their entire lives and they'll they'll, they'll never see that. They Lucky, don't achieve it, they well, don't get there. They some, just end up miserable. Some of them made it. Lucky are they who have reached to this um, very in, end of their life where they get to enjoy what they've told for the, rest, for the entire life. But um, yeah, for me, it's not for me. I came from the Philippines where I have nothing and 
makes me feel very like light, living the life on a day by day basis. Mm. Of course, we have to worry also the future, but we can't always like live in the future. What if? What if we have to live fully in the present? And that's a funny thing. Like, I think for me when I saw that, it was kind of like, you know, how can you be happy with that? How can you be happy every day? And you know, but the thing is. It's not part of their construct. They don't look to the future. They're just enjoying as it is now, and they have no concept of, you know, thinking about retirement and securing trust funds and investment funds and superannuations. There's none of that, and that's how they're able. Because maybe like Jen didn't have the knowledge of that in the first place, but she was able to focus on the day and what's in front of her and actually、mm. enjoy it and fully embrace it. Whereas with me, I looked at her and just went, "That's crazy. Like, how could you be happy living that way?" Because、but、obviously, the way that I'm living is not making me happy. So, because I don't, one of us has something wrong. I don't define.、Me. I don't define the quality of life having a lot of nice things. I am living the quality of life when I am most at my peace and joy, happiness. It's like, yes, it, some people, or I don't know, like people would define their success or the quality of their life when they have everything, when they can buy everything they want. Yes, that's nice, of course. But、um, it's just not for me. Like I feel like in here, I'm more depressed than. You see, for most people, it never happens. They'll toil and they'll work and they'll toil,、mm-hmm. and they'll get maybe half of what they want, and they always end up wanting more. You know, I've known many people, especially even some of Dad's friends, who worked just as hard as he did. And literally ended up with nothing at the end of their life. Got nowhere and still had a mortgage and a big amount of debt to pay off, and they're like in their sixties. One of them get a divorce too, and then for the,、so、all the hard works, or、oh, of course you had to split with your、yeah. spouse, and then and they split because of the financial. Oh, they needed more. They wanted more. You know, they. It was the financial aspect of their relationship that caused that split. Mm. Which is the one thing that they put all their work and investment and effort into, and that's that's the point where it collapsed.、Mm. I just don't get it. And some of the comments I've read, like one of them mentioned that yes, my like I am a Filipino, and that I, my hands are open. I don't know. I can't remember that. That what he was implying is like you know we are like just chasing after the、um, the money, which is、um, ridiculous. Because we started really nothing, both of us, and we built together our lives. And look, there's Filipinas that are like that, and there's Filipinas that are genuine. There are Australian women that are gold diggers, and there's Australian women that are genuine. It's、mm. you know you can't stereotype a single culture because people of that character exist in every single culture all around the world. So I definitely don't agree with that.、Um, everything's individual. Every person has their own thoughts and their own feelings.、Um, And that's what it comes down to. So look, I guess we haven't even shown them updates yet in the video. <laughs> of the house. A, a quick glimpse of our、um, home in the Philippines. Maybe we'll just, just like a quick snippet. Yeah, we'll、search. just snippet it、Inserts. into the thing.、Um, yeah, it's nothing special. It's not a big, big, big、um, mansion, but it's. It's our mansion. It's no, it's not a mansion. It's no, it's our mansion. Our little mansion.、Yeah. <laughs> Right. It's not at all. It's it's、um, decent and it's、um, well、um, designed、yeah. because you are the designer, of course. <laughs> But、and、yeah, I, I think the moral of this video is, I mean, we just wanted to get it out there that look, the house is coming together. It's really, really close to completion, and these are some of our fears and some of the worries and anxieties that we have as it gets closer. You know, it's it's really getting real, and it's time for us to really make. Make a stand and make a decisive, take decisive、mm. action、um, for what we want to do and where we want to go, because we may never get the opportunity again.、Mm. Um, so, for anyone who's experiencing this out there, sound off in the comments below.、Um, let us know how you dealt with it, what you felt, and where you are today. Did you succeed? How did you go? How did it all work out for you? Was it the right decision? Do you wish you did things differently?、Uh, again, open forum. And this is a place where we want everybody to come together and share their thoughts and experiences and their successes, so that we might be able to learn from you and model you, and you know, find our own way for achieving that dream that we all seem to have have similarly. So I don't know. Without further ado, I guess anything else? I think that's about it. We just wanted to emphasize that.、Um 
yeah all of our all of our efforts we shouldn't forget enjoying every moment not just living in the future yes it's scary for us to go jump and move to philippines because we don't know what will life would be there but um we can't also live here when we feel like this is not for us when we feel we are already burnt out when we feel we are depressed to our current situation well it's manageable but you know like there is there is there is a feeling of like we are in prison we're in a nice prison so <laughs> it sort of feel like that or to charged. me like five years being here in australia i feel like i'm six now. sick i'm choking six years say yeah. six years yeah so i feel like i am in prison we just had it after nice years, nice prison yeah yeah pretty much it and a holiday isn't isn't going to fix it you're going to go away for seven days ten days come back and it's always going to be in the back of your mind so i think the only way for us for us to relax is to go live in the philippines and just forget it all and just unwind and why not reset and like fully re reset yeah and then that's the time like our motivation our creation creativity yeah like our creative <laughs> our creativity will come back our inspirations will come back and we'll feel more alive hopefully or well, maybe we're just getting old um i don't know <laughs> we'll see we'll that's see. to find out like that's in the future but anyway guys thanks again for watching we hope that you enjoyed the content today Make sure to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And guys, we'll see you on the next one. This is the Castaway Crew, signing, signing off. off.